This is astronaut Mike Fink, who spent 381 days in space. And I'm gonna be spending a day with him at NASA's base to find out what a year in space actually did to his body. It's a dangerous business. All that skin that's there, it has to go somewhere and it flakes off and it gets a little gnarly. Wow. That's interesting. The reason I'm making this video is because I decided to pull a little trick on my friends. They told me that they would be down to spend a year in space. Yes. 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 But I wanted to see if they actually meant it. So I tricked them into signing a contract that says that I'll sign them up for the NASA Civilian Space Program. And we're gonna see if they're still down to go after learning what actually happens to you. Getting used to it takes a while. We're used to the blood pooling to our legs, but our faces get all full. What we call fluid shifting. We hurl, we, get, we feel sick, and we call it space adaptation. Sickness. I struggle sitting in back seats of cars. Wait, would the puke just like float all over? You gotta just find a bag. I mean, I'll, I'd survive. I, I could, okay. I could get over that. By day seven, your water's gone, so you're gonna have to start recycling your pee. We actually recycle our water, take all the water out of the urine. We get close to 95% of our water back. You know, I trust that they have a good way of like cleaning it and making it safe to drink. We send the urine through here, then it goes into the urine processing assembly, which is uh, not working perfectly right now. Each time we send up a bottle of water, it costs us like two or $3,000. So that recycling is really good. So when you're drinking water, 95% of it was once pee. Yep but it's pasteurized and purified and tastes great. How do I feel about drinking my own pee? I don't feel, I, I don't want to do that. But little do they know the insane things they have coming up for them, literally. Also, at this point, your muscle mass will have decreased roughly 15%. 15? At this point, 20% of your muscle mass is gone, so you are significantly weaker. That sucks. If I start thinking like, I'm gonna be a twig by the time I leave, I might wanna leave. Now that your body is definitely over the space adaptation sickness and you've been in the ship for 14 days, to keep your body in decent shape for both your muscle mass and your bone density, which we'll talk more about later, you'll need to start working out for two and a half hours a day on a treadmill, bike, and weightlifting machine. So when you float up to this on space, you're just floating up to this blue box here and you're going to have shoes that clip into these pedals. That is gonna keep you from floating away while you're cycling. That makes a lot, I didn't think about that, yeah. Wouldn't you need to be like strapped into the seat or something? So there's ropes that strap you into the bike so you don't fly off. My crewmate, Sandy Magnus, she's getting her exercise in for today. But in space, when you press, you're floating away. So now you have to pull yourself down, which is why we're using the clipped in shoes. Even with this amount of working out, you will leave in significantly worse muscular shape than when you got there. That doesn't surprise me that you would still, even with working out two and a half hours a day, kind of come back weaker. Is there like a bench press? Yes, there is. There is a bench press? <laughs> I'm in. I don't know how you're feeling, but so far my friends are still in. In order to preserve our water and recycle everything, air conditioning in space station keeps it very dry. Right now in Houston, Texas, it's always humid. It makes my hair frizz, right? But in space, it's so dry that uh, a lot of us are used to this humidity here. We get dry skin. I moved away from my hometown. hometown. One of my main reasons was because it's so dry. Crumbs are a hazard in zero gravity, so you will have got used to eating only mushy, rehydrated foods. So the space ice cream that people get at like gift shops, like is that accurate? No, we don't have astronaut ice cream, but we do have dehydrated food for sure. I've prepared you a little bowl here. You it know. seems kind of crunchy. Yeah, but you can't eat it crunchy. You would rehydrate them. That sucks. It's hard to know when to eat at normal meal times, though. How do time zones work on the ISS? We stick to the, uh, the Greenwich Mean Time or Universal Coordinated Time or GPS time. So at this point, you'll have experienced 640 sunsets and sunrises because there's 16 per day for 40 days because the oh, ISS whoa. orbits the Earth every 90 minutes. Wow. Would you be able to deal with that with your circadian rhythm? I think that'd be cool. And yeah, if I could cover up the windows and sleep when I need to sleep, I think that'd be awesome. It's so interesting to me how easy it is to justify the things that would seem so inconvenient on Earth in order to have the opportunity to go to space, as well as, of course, the mental aspects that you'd hit by day 40. Do you experience loneliness? Like, do you miss your family at all? I think the trickiest part of flying in space for long duration time is how you approach it, your mental health. When I was up there, I think that was the toughest part. I had uh, one little kid at home, my wife had a second child uh, while I was up there, and I couldn't be there for my little baby. By day 50, though, things get even more challenging on the body. Do astronauts have to do these 
EVAs, extravehicular activities, which is what they call spacewalks. And that's one of the hardest things they have to do. They get super sore. So this is where they train for that. This is a giant pool called the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. Would you say this is one of the biggest pools maybe? Yes, it is one of the biggest in the world actually. Oh, wow. And as far as activity goes, I think it's the most active pool like this. The one best things about the MBL is we can do full duration spacewalks here, which means we keep the crew members in the water in the suit for about six and a half to seven hours. Yeah. That's similar to on orbit. Not everybody uh, qualifies for it just because you have to fit into the suit. You have to be uh, able to do it. I was very lucky that I fit into it and uh, uh, it worked for me. But before my friends can make their decision on how they feel about all this, let me show them what one of his spacewalks actually looked like. I'm going to bring it down into a rough position. It'll be three to four turns to a hard stop. It's much wider than in the neutral buoyancy training facility. I'm not sure I'm getting the uh, threads just right on this one. And while we watch Mike do this spacewalk, I want to tell you about Odoo. We'll just keep working it till we do. If you run a business, Odoo will change your life. You should have seen my face when I learned about Odoo. It was like when Mike's spacewalk started working out. There we go. I got two with a few threads on it. Odoo has over 45 apps to help entrepreneurs power up their productivity and simplify their operations. Let's start with just one. Since your first app with Odoo, whichever one you choose is free. This is a tough uh, task here. I agree with Mike, which is why I organize my tasks using Odoo's project manager. You can add customizable stages and task lists. You can move tasks around with a simple drag and drop, assign team members, set deadlines, and collaborate seamlessly through built-in chat. Plan activities, write notes, send emails, and attach documents all in one centralized place. And you can choose the project view that fits your workflow best. Nice and tight. Okay. Our plan is coming together. A nice view of the planet right there, Mike. Oh, yeah. So click the link in the description to try Odoo. Remember, your first app with them is free. Shoulders will hurt. Your hands will hurt a lot. But is that okay with you? Yeah. That's a once in a lifetime option. Not even. A uh, spacewalk is really interesting because it probably doesn't work how you expect. You'll notice throughout this video, we call the environment you'd be living in microgravity, or zero G, not zero gravity. And that's because you wouldn't actually be in zero gravity. In fact, if you built a building up to the height of the International Space Station and walked out onto the top of it, it would feel just like this. The gravity would be almost exactly the same. And if you jumped off, you'd fall right back to Earth. The only reason astronauts float in the International Space Station is the same reason that if you stuck this marker cap inside of this bottle and then dropped them at the same time, in that moment of dropping, the marker cap would feel like it was floating. The International Space Station is just falling towards Earth the same way you would at that height, but it's moving horizontally at a really fast speed at the same time as gravity is pulling it down. That means that as it's falling, it's constantly missing the Earth, and so it just orbits around the Earth forever. If it were to stop, it would fall back down. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget... If you subscribe to the channel this year, I'm literally sending your name into space. But back to my friends... After 50 days, you'll have had zero showers, since that's impossible in zero G. Only sponge baths. We tried showers in an early space station called Skylab. It didn't work. How about some soap, Jack? You're gonna need that. Okay, here's some soap, it's special. We just learned that sponge baths are better, and my wife is my best critic, and she, when I, after my first six-month mission, I said, do I smell? And she said, no. I shower at least probably twice a day, usually. I've never taken a sponge bath, but I'm just trying to see the bright side. Let's jump ahead again. By day 80 on your trip, you'll be needing those sponge baths because you'll have definitely tried some of the other workout equipment by now, such as this space treadmill. So in space, the treadmill is mounted onto the wall facing the deck. So it feels like you're running like this normal. Right. But if you were to film it, this is what it would look like. All right, you ready to go? Yeah. yeah this is pretty hard. We can't incline the treadmill, so to give you a different perspective of running, we're going to change to passive mode, and what that does is the motor, instead of driving the belt, the motor is going to put the brakes on the belt. It's gonna create some resistance. You're gonna have to hold on to this handrail oh. and lean on it and try to overcome. It's like the Stairmaster. Exactly. If I close my eyes, I just would think I'm walking up a mountain. Yes. It's crazy, it's simulating <laughs> it. Are the straps, like are they? It was. It was pretty weird. brutal, it kind of hurt. Little do they know that they may get to go if they keep staying in the video. By this point, there's also some gross things that will happen to your body. We lose our calluses on the bottom of our feet because we stop walking. We're floating all the time. Wow. The bottoms of our feet, like we all have them, have a little bit of extra skin and that goes away. And so by the time you're done with your three to six month or eight month mission, you get little baby feet when you come back. Wow. 
don't want to throw up. I don't like that. That's yeah. the worst one. I don't like that. I'd rather eat like mushy banana meatloaf than yeah. do that. That's all the things that happen to you by day 50. That moves us into our next milestone, which is day 100. Day 100. If Mr. Beast trapped you in space, this is how long he would trap you for. At this point, you're probably going to start experiencing the space stupids, they call it. The things that happen to you at this point are quite strange. Most people, they, they say it starts happening around month three or four. I didn't notice it, but maybe I'm just naturally stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. NASA sent Scott Kelly into space for a year and kept his identical twin, Mark Kelly, on the ground and studied how their bodies changed over time. That's how they learned about this cognitive decline. Are you okay with getting a little bit dumber in space? If I'm 1% dumber permanently, then I would still go to space. Because that, again, it's space. I'm already not the smartest person. This cognitive decline may be caused by the sleep deprivation that astronauts get. Astronauts on the ISS only get five and a half to six and a half hours of sleep a night on average. On Earth, we rely on our mattress, pillow, and gravity pulling us down to feel comfortable. In microgravity, they don't have this. We sleep standing up, we have a sleeping bag, we have a computer in front of us, we can make phone calls. How does that compare to like this like little area we're in right now? We can fit four sleeping quarters into this area. Wow. Uh, Sandy put these uh, crew quarters together. This is what it looks like inside. There's a fair amount of room. We'll get the, uh, has a standard uh, space station light on it. Is this lack of sleep a problem for you? Man, you can't mess with sleep. I'm not a good sleeper as it is, so that's not too far off from what I already do. It is worth noting though, that getting through the day in microgravity is just easier. So you may not actually notice this as much. Mike said that when he got back, he was getting tired earlier in the day. For me, I just notice uh, I'm, I'm more tired at the end of the day. It's like, wow, I feel so tired. Dude, it's only five o'clock. You're usually, five o'clock is when you're at your peak. But then at the end of two months, we're driving again, or we're lifting weights, we're doing the same amount of pull-ups, and we're back as good as new. So everyone's still in by this point. Moving us on to day 180, six months in. By now, you'll not really been outside besides a few amazing spacewalks for six months. You can get a bit claustrophobic in there. So this is an exact mock-up of the International Space Station. This is one of the many rooms. You can kind of look around and see exactly what it looked like for Mike when he was living here. But the difference is, obviously, he wouldn't be walking around. He'd be floating around. See, it's uh, also spacious. It's also cluttered because uh, uh, it's a great place to store things or temporarily stow them. In the workout room, they were telling me how they had to use every single wall and just utilize everything that they possibly can. We're very close to Earth in the International Space Station, and so we get more radiation than we do on, on Earth because we're not protected by the atmosphere. We're protected a lot by this Earth's magnetic field that expresses itself as the Van Allen radiation belt, so we still have a lot of protection. At 180 days, you'll have also experienced a significant amount of radiation, you will have gotten the same radiation as 1,275 chest x-rays, about 20 to 50 times higher than you would naturally during this period on Earth. This means your cancer risk may go up by about 1%. Only 1% more likely to have cancer? It's not that bad. At 180 days, you'll also almost certainly have developed neuroocular syndrome. 70% of astronauts do. Another thing the twin study found was that being in microgravity for you know a long period of time is gonna increase the fluid behind your eyes. Did you experience this and what is that like? 70% get it and 30% don't. We're trying to figure out first off what causes it and why some people get it and why some people don't. What we're really worried about is when you come back, some people don't get better. Eyes bulging out is a little scary to me. If they pay for my eye surgery, that comes out of the United States tax money. I'm good. Surprisingly, everyone wanted to stay in at the six month mark. Space travel really is just cool enough that this stuff is, honestly, trivial to most people in exchange for the incredible opportunity to do this. I mean, I'm certainly still in at this point, but this moves us on to our next checkpoint, day 250. By now, you're probably going to be experiencing extreme food cravings. On my first mission, I missed like greasy fried chicken. I probably would be able to eat more freely in space than I do down here. I'll be eating healthier, right? I'll be probably, eating healthier. Probably, But there was still one more piece of workout gear you'd try by this point too. So this is the weightlifting machine. How we get our loading on this weightlifting machine in space is we have two cylinders and we create a vacuum inside of those. So is this an exact replica of what they have on the ISS? It is. This lift bar is gonna float up over you. Okay. And we're going to bring it down to chest levels. It'll come down and we want it right. We want it to where you can float out. If there's a fire or 
Oh. And ammonia. We don't want you pinned under this bar without a spotter. But even with these machines working out your muscles, by this point, you'll have lost 5 to 8% of your bone density. There's nothing I can do to stop that. I can't. Well, it would be worse if you didn't exercise. I mean, 30 to 80% higher fracture risk is really bad. It'd be hard and weird and probably really scary. Like, let's just say someone, you know, twists their ankle or breaks a bone in space. Are you guys trained to handle that? Because obviously you can't just like go to the hospital, you're in space. We get what we call crew medical officer training and we know how to take care of uh, wounds. We know how to take care of our friends. We have telemedicine available. We'll put the cameras on, yeah. talk to our flight surgeons on the ground. Around, they know us. Also on day 250, your DNA will have been altered for reasons we don't fully understand in a way that makes you age faster when you get back to Earth. Are you okay with aging a little bit faster? Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe it's about time I look a little older. I definitely care about aging, but I think I care about space a little bit more. It seems like my friends are young enough to not really care about that. And frankly, that's everything that would happen to your body by day 250, which brings us to one year. By one year, or 381 days to be exact, as Mike has done, you'll have lost 7 to 13% of your bone mass. This means you're 40 to 150% more likely to break a bone. All of this is incredibly inconvenient. But it's space. Would you still go to space for a year if given the opportunity to? Yeah, I would. I would. I'd go to space for a year. What if I told you I actually presented you that opportunity? Right now? The moment you walked in here, before this interview even started. What do you mean? Well, I had you sign a form. Do you remember that? <laughs> that we told you was an appearance release, but Jaden, I would never make you sign an appearance release because you're my friend. But there was actually a line that we snuck into the contract that says that I acknowledge that Jack Orton retains the right to submit my name for consideration in one of NASA's civilian space programs should the opportunity oh, arise, on, and you dude. signed it. Do you actually want to go, or do you want to cross your name off this contract? So far, we've pushed the limits to one year and people are coming back okay. So what we've really learned along the way, it, it kind of depends on the person. Yeah. It depends on the, the support that they have. Do they have exercise equipment? Do they have decent food? Do they have something interesting to do? I stand by it. I'm put my name in. Wow. <laughs> Keep my name on there. Okay. Please, submit right. me for space. Am I going to want to just dip out and leave my fellow Earthlings to go explore another realm? I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to go anymore, Jack. No, I want to go. Let's okay. do it. I'm in. I'm All in. Right. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. Done. Let's go. Just like that, after telling them literally every flaw and worst case scenario, all four of my very different friends each said they would still go to space. This video was a dream come true for me, and I hope that one day we all get to actually experience this for ourselves.